This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, I'm Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today we're talking with Dean Opperman, Chief Engineer, Advanced Truck with Navistar. Dean, great to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, thanks, Jason, for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so very excited to talk because recently you announced uh, the International Super Truck 2, which is always super fun because we get to see all this really cool technology. I wanted to talk through some of the equipment bullet points that you had uh, outlined in the release. The first and really one of the biggest standout things to me was the hybrid powertrain. This is a hybrid vehicle. Can you walk us yep. through basically the powertrain? What size engine? What size battery pack? How does this work and come together and, and what efficiency? Yep. A uh, uh, benchmark where you're looking to hit. So the super truck program focused on on both um, brake thermal efficiency on the engine um, as well as improvements in the uh, on the vehicle side. Mm -hmm. So um, what we did was uh, we tried to manage uh, both those activities by combining um, a hybrid system with our 13 liter um, diesel engine. Uh, the hybrid system is a P2, P3 uh, system uh, with uh, an electric motor that has an output of about 150 kilowatts, uh, and we support that with a 30 kilowatt battery. Okay, when you say P2, P3 system, what, is, what does that mean? So, so basically what that means is um, the electric motor can uh, both power the, the powertrain as well as start the engine and charge the battery uh, through the vehicle. So power basically goes in, in both directions. It's, it's put after the, the clutch in the, in the transmission. Oh, wow. Or okay. between the transmission and the clutch. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay, that, yeah. that, that's interesting. Uh, so, sorry, I, sorry, I gotta boil this yeah. down <laughs> a little bit. So are you, so when, I, when I'm driving the truck, I hit the accelerator, right? The engine is, is it driving the charging of the batteries that's driving an electric powertrain no. or it's all working no. in concert to help no. reduce No, the it's, 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 yeah, no, it's a, a classic series or I'm sorry, parallel hybrid. I see. Uh, yeah. So what that means is <clears throat> when you're at, at stop and you hit the throttle, uh, full throttle, uh, we actually use uh, electric power um, because it is more efficient than uh, running through the gears and uh, it has more torque um uh, availability so we use electric power to launch okay uh, and then at a certain speed or gear load uh, uh, that's determined by fuel efficiency um uh, uh, analysis and predictions uh we then switch from electric or or zero emission uh control to uh the diesel powertrain it will start that powertrain up with the electric motor oh right, I so Right, right, I see. So, and, and to go back to it, you said you're using uh, the international engine. Are you using the entire powertrain, the part of the yes. powertrain that you launched here maybe a year or two ago? Yes, yes. Uh, it's because um, part of the super truck program was to develop a, a breakthrough and efficiency uh, powertrain that is 55% brake thermal efficiency. Um, we, we did do a significant amount of development on the engine. Um, I do have a counterpart and his team uh, made some huge advancements in the um, brake thermal efficiency of the engine. Some of those have some of those advancements have cascaded themselves into the the engine that that we just launched uh, in the last year. Oh, I see. OK, That's super it. cool. Yeah, I want to I want to follow up on that uh, in a minute. Real quick, though, yep. what what kind of MPG fuel efficiency are you looking at then with the hybrid powertrain? So, I mean, that, that's a very, it's sort of a loaded question. Uh, people ask me that all the time. Um, the way that I answer it is um, we have uh, a number of different cycles that we use to sort of understand the fuel economy of our vehicles and how we progress in improving that fuel economy. So these are real world cycles that we say, that, that we have uh, demonstrated, I should say, that, that capture the majority of our customer um, operate operations so we uh, those cycles are illinois or we call them illinois flatlands so it's it's basically right. a uh a 500 mile ish 
route around the you know the midwest here right. and then uh we also have a, a hilly cycle we call kentucky hills okay um and so uh if you ask about the fuel economy what i would say is uh we were able to demonstrate uh 16 percent uh or i'm sorry 16 miles per gallon on our illinois uh cycle Okay. Yeah. And that, uh, is that loaded? Then what kind of load or what do you talk about then? Is that loaded? So, okay. That's, that's a very good question. Um, as defined by the super truck program, uh, the, the tear, the, the overall, the, the, uh, gross vehicle weight of the, uh, of the tractor trailer combination is set to be 65,000 pounds. Okay? okay. So, um, as your, your audience probably knows, the max is 80,000 pounds. Right. Um, and 65 was, was basically set for the super truck programs as an average between an unloaded and a loaded, a fully loaded scenario. Right. Right. Um, well, so in, yeah, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, even, I mean, fleets often they, they'll cube out before they weigh out too. So kind of a exactly, right exactly. Yeah. So, um, and, and by setting that target weight for, for all of us, um, it, it basically um, defines what the freight efficiency is, right? Because um, what we do is what we do a lot of work to reduce the weight of the vehicle, um, and that allows us then to um, add more freight at this uh, 65,000 pound limit. I see, I see, I see. Very interesting. Um, going back to the uh, some of the the powertrain innovations uh they said and even some have tried, kind of trickled down into the series production launch then how viable is a hybrid powertrain in the market do you see this as something that could be down the line or is this is this more of a r d exercise so so that once again that's that's sort of a difficult question to answer so is it a viable alternative i think we've demonstrated that yes it is any tractor trailer that runs 16 miles per gallon um, has to be looked at as a viable alternative. Unfortunately, uh, and I will say unfortunately, um, it's still not considered a zero emission vehicle. Right. And legislation today is really driving zero emissions versus uh, improved emissions in any way. So uh, that that's really limiting our ability to develop this for future uh, product. I see. Yeah, I mean, and you bring that into because we have seen a lot of regulation and legislation, and rightly or wrongly, I suppose it is tending to favor a certain technology and, and pushing that way. Whereas you know, fleets are kind of looking at a, a, a larger decarbonization strategy of being able to yes. make an improvement yeah. that way. Yeah. We, we'll stay out of the politics uh, there. Totally get uh, what you're- I appreciate what you're that. I would appreciate there. it. <laughs> uh, the other component that was really, really interesting in what you did here, you built your own trailer. Is that correct? Yeah, so I was uh, also heavily involved. I was a chief engineer for our super truck one uh, program. Right. And uh, during that uh, development, uh, what we found was um, not only is the aerodynamics of the vehicle really uh, sort of limited by the trailer or defined by the trailer. Mm. Um, I used to tell everyone that we actually designed the uh, super truck one from the back forward. Because it, it isn't until you clean up the trailer that you can really optimize the tractor um, because the trailer really causes a lot of the drag uh, associated. And, and, it does, and, it, and until you do that, you can't really unlock the opportunities of the tractor. And um, what we found in Super Truck 1 is there is a significant resistance to changing the shape of the box trailer yeah. okay and uh and the materials and uh and the, the the basic core technology we'll call it of the trailer um was pretty much set in stone with the suppliers that we were working with right. yeah there there was a lot of opportunity to put extra devices on and and and, and work in that space but as far as the core trailer we we found that it was very restrictive um, not only to developing trailers that were lighter weight and more air, but, but 
also in our ability, in Avastar's ability to reduce the aerodynamic drag of the overall vehicle. So um, yeah, so we, we decided uh, very early on in the program that uh, in order for us to do that, we, we need to change the paradigm slightly um, and, and focus a little bit more on the trailer, trying not to disrupt the industry. Uh, we have the same volume within the trailer itself, um, but moving that volume around slightly in, in an effort to, uh, once again, improve the overall system aerodynamics. Yeah, can, can you kind of share how you did that or, or what are the standout points within the trailer construction so, that allowed you to do that? Yeah, so a, a very good question. Um, so we worked with a company called TPI. They were a great opportunity for us um, to uh, design a composite trailer. So it, with dealing with uh, composites, you get the sort of generic weight reduction options or opportunities, I should say. But it also allows you to design um, uh, features on the trailer that uh, are more aerodynamic. For example, the uh, front of the of our trailer is uh, curved; it's shaped to take okay. up the volume of uh, area uh, between the tractor and trailer, right? In an efficient way um, that uh, improves aerodynamics, right? Uh, that is very difficult to do with today's construction of flat panels and 90 degree corners, right? Uh, so we also were able to shape the corners, the top corners of the trailer as well. Once again, using composites um, as, as a means of, of doing that, but and still maintaining the strength of the system. Right, right. Well, and that, it's a really interesting example, too, because I think historically truck OEMs and trailer OEMs haven't quite, there's not a ton of communication from my understanding between the design of equipment between those two segments. In doing this, does it does it inform potentially any any truck designs of yours going forward or even maybe how you might work with trailer partners in the future? So it, it does multiple things. One, one it, as I said earlier, the, the trailer that you're designing your tractor to um, can can unleash uh, a lot of opportunity as far as overall aerodynamic drag. Um, so yes, uh, it does inform uh, you know the, the type of trailer that 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 we're designing to does inform our design. Um, I, I think you know it's probably not I think what we found was, there are a lot of opportunities outside of um, radical changes to our tractor that can generate significant fuel economy benefits at a lower cost, right? right? And and they're in the trailer, right? right? And uh, so, um, you know, how the industry wants to proceed with that is uh, still, I guess, a little bit up in the air. Yeah, well, but, I mean, uh, this is the next step to to doing that. Well, and fleets might be in a good position there because I, if I'm a fleet, I'm the customer buying the tractor, I'm the customer buying the trailer, and if I want to improve some efficiency, maybe I can work with both of you to get you both to the table to figure out what I need. Ex so, uh, interesting conversation. Exactly, there. exactly. I mean, I would say it's probably even more uh, opportunity for the owner operator who owns who may own sure. both the tractor and the trailer, right? Because, so those are always going to be together. You know, like the major fleets, uh, they have multiple trailers, right? That run across one tractor. Yeah. Um, so, you know, designing around every trailer is probably not, uh, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, minimize the opportunity uh, in the tractor. Um, so, you know, that's always been an issue in the trailer uh, industry with a lot of the technologies. And I, and I can go through a number of other trailer technologies that we've developed on Super Truck is the legacy product that's out there, the legacy trailers that, that are out there and that are still being used, right? And how do you design a tractor that on one day could use solar panels, for example, right. but on the next day, you know, you got a trailer without solar panels, right? right or right. ride height controls, or or, or or these types of technologies that that were were still uh, demonstrating significant value in. Um, however, 
you know, the, the industry is, is sort of stuck because of all these the legacy product that's out there. Yeah, unless you kind of maybe like look at a chunk of applications or a specific route or a specific use case of groupings of trucks. I mean, you know, yep. even just thinking here with trailer telematics coming into the smart trailer world, right? You can get a much clearer yep. picture of that operation to be able to link those up. Yep. I, I mean, I, I, there, there are now 50,000 more questions I could ask you on that, <laughs> but, but I've already learned a ton. I really appreciate you yep. taking the time. Very cool, Super Truck 2, uh, International Super Truck 2, really cool technology. Thanks for taking the time to, uh, to share a bit more here with us. Thank you.